Within the past five years, Brazil has dealt with economic crisis and political turmoil. Growing opposition to the policies of Brazil's president, Dilma Rousseff, ended in her removal from office in 2016. Rousseff did not initially acknowledge that there was a recession going on. The government was basically in denial that, that people were dissatisfied or that the economy was in such bad shape as it, as it was. They were clearly living in a bubble or else thought that they could somehow muddle through this problem as well. And that made her seem completely untouched with the people, which of course she was. President Dilma Rousseff was narrowly re-elected in 2014. She was ill-prepared to handle the resentment toward her government, which by the following year had turned into protests in Brazil's largest cities. It was a very high election and also very divided. So the south and southeast of Brazil were in favor of Baecio Neves, the social democrat, and the north and northeast were uh, very in favor of Dilma Rousseff, the Workers' Party candidate. Um, many people uh, lost friends because of social networks and social media. Uh, so it, it was a kind of an election that really uh, divided the country. Dilma Rousseff's presidency gave Brazil high unemployment, high inflation, not only low GDP growth, but the GDP decreased and the biggest corruption scandal in Brazilian history. Prior to 2015, large protests seemed to have no impact. There was no concerted call for specific reforms. The movements lacked focus. The economic situation in Brazil uh, got worse in 2015. What Kim and his movement managed to do was articulate a libertarian uh, agenda. Kim set very specific goals, starting with the impeachment of President Rousseff, and that was something that the Brazilians could get behind and could understand. Kim Kataguri and the leaders of the Free Brazil movement saw an opportunity to galvanize these different groups to call for specific reforms. Those reforms included a free and independent press, economic freedom, separation of powers within the government, free and reputable elections, and the end of direct and indirect subsidies to dictatorships. For years, corruption affected Brazil's state-run oil business. In the run-up to major protests, scandals emerged in plans for the 2014 World Cup and the 2016 Rio Summer Olympics. When it was decided that Brazil was going to host those events, they were celebrated as a symbol that Brazil had made it. But it was just symbolic. Then you saw that how much corruption was going on, because the, the construction companies in Brazil are at the center of the corruption scandals. And they were obviously benefiting from you know, all these events and building stadiums and whatnot. They were doing this not only with Brazilians, but with uh, countries throughout the, the continent now. The Free Brazil movement is focused on reforming Brazilian government institutions to make Brazil a freer country. Brazilians are expecting and getting more from their government in terms of holding criminals and politicians accountable. That's a change in, in Brazil and that's something that all of Latin America is looking at kind of in, su in surprise because we all know that there was a lot of corruption going on there and in Latin America typically there is and people don't usually uh, get held accountable. Kim Kataguri and the Free Brazil movement changed government and ignited a firestorm within a culture that continues to intensify and bolster the roots of liberty in Brazil.